Hey there, in this video I'm going to cover how to bench with proper form and break it all down joint by joint. The biggest things you need to focus on here is keeping that lumbar neutral, keeping that thoracic extended, keeping that cervical neutral, and keeping that scapula depressed. Things like bar path and if the elbows are tucked in more or out more wide, I'll get into detail later. So the lumbar here is the lower back, and you want to keep that neutral. So this does not mean keep it perfectly flat, but for the most part, it should be somewhat flat. Basically, you want to keep its natural curve. So this means what the lower back looks like in your posture. It should look like the one on the right. If it looks like the one on the left, you have an anterior pelvic tilt. Go click that video on the top right corner to learn how to fix that. Now when I say keep the thoracic extended, basically I mean arch that upper back, but do not arch that lower back. So you can see right here how with that lower back, it's off the bench, but it actually looks pretty straight. This is because when we arch that upper back, that L1 already starts off pretty high off the bench. Now you shouldn't really concentrate a ton on extending that thoracic, but this should just happen when you focus on depressing the scapula. So what I mean by this here is keep that shoulder away from the ear. So notice here how that shoulder is pretty far away from the ear. It's not shrugged up against the neck close to the ear. So do not arch that lower back like I'm doing right here, but instead keep that lower back neutral in its natural curve. Now do not arch that neck and point that head back like I'm doing right there, but just keep that natural curve of the neck, so keep it neutral and keep the head pointing up toward the ceiling. Now make sure you don't shrug the shoulders toward the ears like I'm doing right there. And make sure you do not round that upper back like I'm doing right there or that lower back either. Make sure that head does not come off the bench. If it comes off the bench, you're probably rounding your upper back. Now, if you want to hit the serratus anterior, that muscle right there, um, you can protract your scapula more when benching. So notice right here how you can see that shoulder joint is kind of moving up and off the bench while that shoulder blade is moving away from the center out to the side sliding along the rib cage. Now if you do this when benching heavy weight, the shoulder may not be in a very safe position here, but you can improve this by just really focusing on depressing the scapula. Another thing you can do too is you can just push it up the way you would normally bench. So just like this here, then when you get at that very top, then protract that scapula, then retract it before you start going down, and then go back down as that scapula is retracted. Now if you bench press with your elbows tucked in a lot more, so more of a close grip, you'll be hitting that anterior deltoid more through shoulder flexion. If you have those elbows out wider, you'll be hitting the pecs more through a hybrid of shoulder horizontal adduction and shoulder flexion. Now if you have those elbows all the way out, we'll really be hitting the pecs a lot. We'll be getting a lot of shoulder horizontal adduction here. The only problem with this here, it's going to be a lot harder to keep that shoulder in a safe position because it's going to be very difficult to both depress that scapula and prevent that shoulder from internally rotating. Now assuming we keep the scapula depression and the amount of shoulder horizontal adduction compared to shoulder flexion the same, if the shoulder externally rotates, you should have a diagonal bar path where it's going up more towards your head. And if the shoulder internally rotates, you could have a diagonal bar path where it's going the other way, toward the hips. So things that would cause a diagonal bar path where it moves toward the head is shoulder external rotation, that would be the biggest one here and then extra shoulder flexion compared to shoulder horizontal adduction 
and then if the scapula elevates as the shoulder flexes and horizontally adducts and then depresses as the um, shoulder horizontally abducts or extends. And then if the bar path's moving diagonal the opposite way, that means we'd be having shoulder internal rotation or more horizontal adduction of the shoulder and the scapula would be depressing as you move up but elevating as you move down. So to make things simple here, do not stress over the bar path because there's many different things that can cause a certain bar path. Instead, focus on the details of all the joints. So focus on the lumbar, the thoracic, the cervical, the scapula, and the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder joint. Basically the things I explained before I started talking about bar paths. Now the last thing I want to add is when you extend the lumbar a crazy amount, like right here, you aren't really putting that shoulder in a safe position because um, when that lumbar extends a ton, the thoracic has to flex, which is going to protract and elevate the scapula. The reason why the thoracic has to flex is because the bench doesn't have an arch in it. So the lumbar and thoracic can't just both extend a crazy amount on a flat bench. The bench would have to be arched too with the back. Now I know you still might be confused on some of these things I went over with in the form on this video. So I'm planning on making specific details going more in depth, breaking down the details on each of these misfunctions. So make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you do not miss out on those videos. Now if you need help with your posture or just specifically fixing an anterior pelvic tilt or you need help with your squat form or you need help with just doing your pulling exercises, I got videos and playlists explaining how to assess these things and fix these things.